Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Sunstar, and we are here today gathering for another weekly tarot reading. Before we dive into our tarot reading of the week, don't forget to give up this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and you know what? Go ahead and hit that notification bell. Ding, 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 ding. Don't you wanna be notified when I post videos? So as mentioned, we're gonna be doing our weekly tarot reading. And today, in addition to that, to get us grounded and in the space, I thought we'd do something a little bit different. We're not gonna do a sound meditation. We're not gonna do an unboxing. I'm gonna do an auric field cleansing for us. Hope you're ready for it. For this auric field cleansing or this energy cleanse to work for us, I invite you to find a space where you can sit and be still, get comfortable and get cozy in your space so we can really start to expand out to feel our auric field. Before we do that though, I wanted to go ahead and show you our three objects that are guiding our intuition this week. We are being guided by three coins this week. First, is the quarter. So I don't really have any big insightful words other than which coin sings to you, which coin speaks to your spirit. Feel that connection between which coin and follow it. This quarter is extra shiny. It is from what year? 2007. And oh, on the back of it is the Montana State little logo. Okay, big sky country. So if you are attracted to this quarter, you are pile one. Extra shiny this week. Um, over here in America, the quarter is pretty much the strongest one aside from the 50 cent piece or the dollar coin, which we don't use very often. So pile one, quarter. Pile two is that penny, and this is a weathered, aged penny. It's been through some things. This penny is from 1973. How many hands have held it? Disgusting. What am I touching? I'm just kidding. So if you're really guided by this aged penny from 1973, pile two is for you. Um, so pile three is the 50 pence piece, and on the front is this like Roman figure. I don't know if it's Mercury or one of the emperors or something. There's a lion and a shield, maybe it's Athena. Um, although they, did, they called her Minerva in Rome. Um, and then on the back is Queen Elizabeth's face. Vagina, yes, there she is. And this coin is from, it doesn't say. Oh, yes it does, 2004. So pile three is for you if you're attracted to this 50 cent piece. All right, now that we have been guided to which pile we're going to pick, we're going to light our candle and do our auric cleanse leading into our tarot reading. So find a space to be comfortable, get settled, and let us strike this match to light our candle, creating our sacred space. I have got a beautiful green pillar candle for us to light to hold our sacred space. And the green color speaks of our desire to open up in springtime, to understand the ability of us to fully manifest and realize our dreams as a growing entity. May this color and this candle seep our roots deep into the ground, deepening, deepening their strength and hold, grounding us in the moment in this reality so that we may expand fully as we light this match, I call on the spirit of fire, the energy of the flame to cleanse our space. And with this candle, we circle once, twice, three times around this room, around your room to cleanse our space. So I'm sending you this flame. Whenever you see this video, to cleanse the space around you, clearing out your energetic field, creating a safety bubble around you for you to dive deep into whatever work you may need to do. So let us begin to breathe together as we prepare for our auric cleanse. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Begin to feel relaxed and settled in this space. Begin to let your defenses down. 
realizing that you can feel a little safe in this space that we've cleansed with our candle magic. Let the day go. Let the evening's plans ahead go. Let this week's plans go. All that matters is right here in this moment, right now. You here balancing, grounding. And I'm gonna bring in a little sound now to cleanse your orc field. And this jar of olivine that I've collected myself is picking up any straggling energy. Any little bits that are hanging on over here, down here, behind you. Let it go. This beautiful volcanic green stone collects all the remnants that are holding on. Oh, don't forget right over there. Let me grab that. Let it go. Release it. It doesn't need to stay with you this week. It's holding no power this week. We're going to bring in a little lavender sweet and calm. Just get that lavender smoke all around you, releasing you, allowing you to expand this week ahead, calling you into what brings you joy. May you live that. Get that right there. Yep. Oh, don't forget right there. And behind you. Yeah. Release it. Let it go. Let that lavender energy ground you in this moment, bringing some peace. And then we bring in our rosemary, our sacred rosemary smoke for prosperity and success and comfort. Let's get all the edges of that org field. Allow the smoke to drift over and around you, under, through you. Cleansing any remnants of any lingering energy that says, you can't, you won't, you shouldn't, you couldn't. We release those today grounding our energy, starting the week ahead with a clear org field. So that whatever you encounter this week helps you progress down that path of purpose. And let's cleanse that energetic field now with a selenite wand, raising your energetic level and presence. Let's just get that one last time. The selenite wand takes that clear energy field and amplifies the vibration you're putting out into the earth, into the universe. It helps gain clarity around your asks of the universe. And last but not least, mm, a little sage clearing spray from Queendom Cultivation. And this one's got clary sage, palo santo, cedar, rosemary, frankincense. Allow that to brighten up your auric field. Spritzing your energy with some brightness. <sighs> there we go. 
That energetic field looks so much better. You're glowing, it's so bright, I can barely handle it. Ooh. Shine that light out this week. Whew, wow, that was good. I don't know about you, but I needed that auric energy cleansing. Whew, everything feels like it's just a little lighter. I hope that that was a little enlivening for you. I think it's about time to dive into our tarot reading. What about you? Are you ready? Let me know in the comments if you haven't already. Let me know in the chat if you haven't already. Which one did you choose? Quarter penny, 50 pence piece. One, two, or three. Oh, without further ado, quarters, quarters. Who needs the quarter? That shiny energy, that real bright silver aspect. Oh, I'm excited. Let's see what's coming through. This week, we are using three decks. We are using the Black Queer Tarot by Kendrick day as our main guiding card and then we are also using the starseed oracle by rebecca campbell and danielle noel she did the artwork and finally we're hit with a beautiful message from the universe has your back by gabby bernstein quarter pile one starting with our black queer tarot card we have the eight of sticks Mm, look at this image. Beautiful, powerful. And sticks are wands. Fire, passion, energy, motivation. The eight of sticks, the eight of wands says you are focused. You are literally zoning in. If you see this individual right here, they are focused at the task at hand. Nothing is distracting them. Not the beautiful sunset behind them, not the flying birds, the twigs, whatever, the sticks. You are focused on the whatever you are doing this week. Right, Bosco? Yeah, Bosco agrees. So if you picked the quarter pile this week, focus on that laser attention to detail. It is now the nitty gritty. You are managing multiple things at once, multiple plates that you have to put in the order the way you need them to be. This is about the finalizing right? We're coming to the nine and 10. So we're getting to the ends of the process. Also, you're tired a little bit because you've been pushing, but the eight gives us a boost. The eight says we're almost there. Okay. So we have all of this at our fingertips and we have the energy and the purpose and the drive. We just have to stay focused and at the task at hand. Keep going. The eights are about those energetic relationships, right? What are you putting out? What are you getting back? It is super important that you pay attention to that right now, okay? Where you're putting your energy, is it flowing back to you? If you're at the end stages of a process with this eight of sticks, I'm hoping that that process is giving back to you, that things are starting to look like you did it for a reason, okay? So we're really offered this chance to be reminded that this is the final push, push through it this week, okay? We're really pushing through. Push, 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 push with this eight of sticks. Oh, I love this. Nothing is distracting us right now. And then our universe has our back message is, when I accept the love of the universe as my primary teacher, I will always be guided back to the light. So are you loving what you're working on? If you're not loving what you're working on, Quarter, it's going to be hard to finish this project. And actually, at the end of this project, if it's not rooted in what you love, the 10 version of this, the 10 of sticks, is going to really feel welcomed. It's going to be like, I'm ready to throw those sticks down. I don't want them anymore. So is this project that you are involved in, that you're working so dedicated towards, are you rooted in love with it? Do you actually enjoy this? Do you care about it? Because if you do, it's going to bring you back to the purpose, to the reason, to the drive as to why you started this. But if this doesn't matter to you and it never did, why did you follow it all the way through? The reminder is to find the joy and to find the love for the project, for the whatever it is that's coming up for you. And remember that your energy, your effort, your motivation is linked at how you care about this project this situation, this scenario. It's something you're actively involved in. So if you don't care about it, why are you there? You're not gonna remember. And in fact, you're just gonna keep turning away from it. This eight says we need some dedication and commitment to this. 
It's got to be connected to a reason and purpose. If it wasn't, why'd you go this far? So my guess is that it really matters to you. So bring that back. Bring the heart back to all of this because that's going to help push you into your final phase of this. And our Starseed Oracle card is the blue flame. Ooh, I love that. Spontaneous awakening, activation, integration time. You are in a really beautiful moment right now, Quarter. This project that you're working on, this end push, the stamina cont to continue, even though we're like three weeks into the year and it already feels like it's been a hundred weeks, you've got this energy. And this is like a spark that connects you to the love of why you're doing this. Remember why you're doing the projects you're doing. Laser focus, organize, get everything in step because when you get it all organized, what you put out gets to come back to you and it inspires you with this blue flame. Spontaneous awakening, activation, integration time. The reason we're integrating all of this, remembering it's rooted in love and something that we desire is because we're in the final stages. And the final stages can feel somewhat challenging sometimes, but you're offered a real big boost of energy this week, okay? Here we are. This is important quarter. This is a big week for you. I love that. You're in the final stages. You're excited about this project. You're pushing forward. You've got the energy to make it all the way through. Yes, quarter. What do you think about that, quarter? I wasn't really sure where we were going. I was wondering if we were tired, but I don't think we're tired. I think you're just at the end stages, and so it's easy to slack off a little bit, but this blue flame hits you and says, don't do it. Remember why you started this project, and remember that you've got inspiration from that. It hits you this week, so you can stay focused, organized, and really come to the end with that 10. Dang, Quarter. I like that. What do you think of your message? Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Next up, we have the Lucky Penny from 1973. Is there anyone who is watching that was born in 1973? Here we go, Penny. Ooh, Penny, our Black Queer Tarot card is the devil. We're being tempted. We're indulging. We've been giving in a lot. We've said, what's the point of any control? What's the point of having any focus? Let's just indulge. Literally the world's ending basically, so why keep going with anything that's hard? That's the phase we've been in. Is that where you want to stay? Is that where you want to remain? The devil reminds us that at times we get too much into what we enjoy. And that's okay, because sometimes we need to get lost there. But we're being called out of that this week, Penny. You're being called forth out of that, okay? All right, Penny, so this devil says... Why are you choosing not to move through this? We have put ourselves in this situation where we feel really okay and comfortable with what we're doing, but in reality, we're hiding a bit. We're choosing not to step out of this luxurious space. We're choosing not to step out of the decadence. We are really feeling like, mm, it's a little bit chaotic out there. So I'm going to stay in my nice little cozy space set up with this gorgeous pillars and these blankets overlooked by this sexy devil-like inspired character that says, don't worry, baby, stay here. We got you. We're safe. When in reality, you're holding yourself back. You're refusing to step out of patterns that have locked you into a certain narrative. Penny, why are we doing these narratives? There's no point in these narratives. They're not helping us anymore. Okay, so you may have thought that this was a safe space. But it's safe because you don't have to progress and you don't have to change. You don't have to grow. Aren't you ready to change, progress, and grow? Something isn't working anymore. You're just sitting there being like, mm, it's like someone's feeding you the grapes, but the grapes don't taste good because you've eaten 10,000 grapes. When you keep doing the same things over and over again, we lose the pizzazz. We lose the energy. Penny, don't you want some inspiration? It's time to say, all right, this was an okay period for whatever reason. We put ourselves here in this luxuriating phase where we don't have to do anything and don't have to progress and don't have to ask why we're choosing to um, do the same things, old indulgences over and over again. It's time to say, all right, is this where I want to rest for a while? Is this where I want to be? Or am I ready to move out? Am I ready to start something again? 
Where do you head next? Okay, we got to a point, we got comfortable. The world has been intense, very intense. And the devil says, just stay there. Just rest in the comfort. Why move? Well, sorry, the message is no longer just stay there. The devil is not actually, in this sense, benefiting us. It's calling us to the next step. It's calling us to move out. It's calling us to move forward. Your future self is saying, hey, you, let's go. Pick up the feet. Let's go. Move it. We have been too casual. We've been too complacent for a while. Time to get things moving. The universe has our back message is when I'm connected to my joyful presence, I attract support from the universe. The way out of this is to tell yourself you can do it and then constantly affirm yourself on this new path. Whew, all right, I'm taking that message in for myself. Constantly affirm yourself on this new path. No one else is going to do it for you. So you might as well affirm the action, the steps that you are taking because you are deserving of that. The only way to get out is to take that first step. And that's going to be the hardest, scariest thing for you is to make the first change. Hello, I'm talking to myself. Clearly this penny was for me. All right, I've been working on changing some patterns and routines that I've gotten stuck in over the past couple months living through this pandemic Lovato, right? Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, so we're stepping out. We're called for more. Our joyful presence. Is joyful presence just being complacent in what we have? I don't think so. Joyful presence to me means we trust that we know where we need to go. We believe in the path that's laid out before us and we take steps boldly towards that future self. The first step is up to you. And I'm here to support you in that. You got it. Take that first step. This is the sign to take that step that you've been holding back on. You've been really happy. Well, you thought you were happy. You've been really complacent where you've been. And you've been itching for more. So take that step. Be present and praise yourself along the way. Good job. You made it. Good job you woke up today and you went to the store. Good job you went to the store after work even though you were exhausted. Good job you went and did this errand with the kids even though you didn't have the energy but you knew you needed to get done. Good job that's stepping out of the patterns of the devil. Our starseed oracle card is empathic starseed, energetic sovereignty, absorbing what's not yours. Some people were telling you that you were okay to stay there. Why do you need to grow? They're not growing, so why do you? Let it go. Don't listen to them. Release that narrative. You've been absorbing other people's BS for far too long. That's what made the complacent state feel okay. Because everybody else is a mess and a wreck. So why do we have to have it together if they're a mess? Well, we're not taking on their stuff. We're not taking on their narratives. We don't walk their path. We walk our path. You walk your path. No one else can do that. So don't take on anyone else's narratives. Don't ask anyone for feedback. You are your own affirmative message. You are your own support. And I'm here to be your secondary support, okay? This message says it's time for action, Penny. Time to get some stuff going. All right? Ooh, I felt that one in my spirit, yo. What about you, Pennies? What do you think? That message, did that message resonate for you? Okay. 50 pence piece, 50 pence piece. Here are your messages, starting with the Black Queer Tarot. And we've got the Three of Cups, which is such a joyous card. It's a breath of fresh air, especially for this week's reading. Three of Cups energy. Look at the energy flowing from cup to cup. There's a certain sense of ease and grace with the Three of Cups. Oh. And look at those golden cups. They're held by golden hands, speaking that we are an active creator in our joy this week. The Three of Cups is a pure message of enjoyment and bliss this week. It's time to enjoy things. You've been a little too serious, 50 pence piece. You've been getting real into the nitty gritties. And so this is a reminder to enjoy and to receive. So often we are in a seek, 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 pursue, 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 action, 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 oriented phase. But this week, 50 pence piece, you're said to receive. You're told to enjoy, luxuriate. Look at all of the bountiful blessings abound and around you. Name them, enjoy them, live your peace this week. 
Okay, so what are you celebrating this week? What's exciting? What's happening? Come back to this video after there's a really exciting thing that happens, after some joyous moment, and let us know in the comments, please. I want to know. 50 pence piece. This is a reminder that this is the enjoyment phase. This week, you're told to relax. Get together with some friends if you have those close-knit people in your bubble, okay? Who makes you happy? Who allows you to live in your joy besides yourself? Who calls you into that bliss? Find them this week and hang out with them. This is your moment. Our universe has the back message for you is my faith has the power to turn trauma into healing, conflict into growth, and fear into love. Oof, this is a great message. So any time this week, any time in the past couple of weeks where you have not been feeling your oats, but not feeling your power, but not luxuriating and living and dreaming, it's because something's blocking you. You're letting a past injury, a past wound affect you this week. No, no, this is enjoyment. Find the joy. And in order to find the joy, you have to remember that your belief in the system of the universe, your belief in whatever beliefs you have, help move you along this path. My faith has the power to turn trauma into healing. You have to believe that that transformation can happen. And part of that transformation piece is enjoying yourself. We can't constantly work on self-improvement and self-help and self-healing without enjoyment. What is the point of always saying, I got to correct, I got to do this, I got to do this better, I got to, okay, you got a lot of I got us. When are you enjoying? It is time to enjoy those things this week. Find your power in the rest. Find your power in your healing and your growth and your enlightenment and your joy. You deserve joy as much as self-growth. And your Starseed Oracle card is you got the love. Hadarian energy. I don't know what that is. That might be um, a star system. So I would look that up. Codependency and boundaries. It's important to have boundaries. Codependency is not great. Interdependency. That's where we're headed. Codependency implies that your joy is dependent on others. Interdependency says your joy influences others. Establish boundaries this week. Remember and believe that you're healing, that you can heal your trauma and that there's a point to all of that. And that is joy. Your joy is contingent on the boundaries, your ability to hold space um, for yourself, your ability to say, I cannot show up for you because I have to show up for me this week. So sorry. Your joy is key. Without your joy, how can you learn to hold those boundaries? How can you believe that your healing um, will actually impact your trauma? How can you believe that you can grow out of conflict and that you can move into a state of love instead of fear without boundaries? Without understanding that you didn't know how to live your joy before, but that this is another opportunity to live your joy. Live your joy. <sighs> I like that 50 pence piece. What do you think? Alrighty, y'all. Wow. What'd you think? Let me know. I really liked this week's message. Remember, you can come back to these whenever you need. This is an ageless, a timeless reading. So come on back whenever you need them. Thank you so much, y'all, for joining me today for our auric cleansing and for our weekly tarot reading. I had a lot of fun. The weekend for me has been filled with sunshine. I'm so blessed, especially in the PNW winter. So thank you, sun goddesses, goddesses, and gods. And I am reminding you that you are a sunbeam, a sun ray in your community that shoots out that spark of energy that the sun gives you. So channel that sun inside. Build that energy up in your heart space and beam that sunlight out into your community. I'm sending you so much love and joy and energy for the week ahead. And I will be seeing you next week for another weekly tarot reading. Have a great week, y'all. Bye.